Hey Canucks fans, it is Roberto Luongo Ring of Honor Night tonight at Rogers Arena and the Canucks are hosting the Florida Panthers and they welcome back Pius Suter. Suter will be returning to the lineup after missing almost a whole month with his injury and Suter was really good before his injury. He had scored four goals in five games, so much so that I was calling him Pius Shooter. But yes, Pius Suter coming back after, I think uh, people were saying it was a concussion and therefore those things are so hard to predict in terms of when you're coming back and protocol and all those things. But Suter is coming back in the lineup and it's the first, only the second time all season, it's game number 30, but it's only the second time all season where we will see both Pius Suter and Teddy Bluger in the lineup. Our two, two of our prized offseason signings going to bolster the Canucks down the middle with Pedersen, Miller, Bluger, and Suter. But like I said, uh, it's only the second time that they've played in the same game. When the season started, Suter started the season, but Teddy Bluger was out on the injured list. And then they come back, they play that one game together in Montreal, I believe it was, and now for the last month, Suter has been off and Bluger has uh, moved in his third line spot playing between Dakota Joshua and, and Connor Garland. So for tonight, Suter will take Neil Zaman's spot on the fourth line between Kuzmenko and Phil DiGiuseppe. So it'll be Pedersen, McKayev and Lafferty, Miller, Besser and Hoglander, then the third line of Bluger, Joshua and Garland, and then the fourth line of Suter with Phil DiGiuseppe and Andre Kuzmenko. And then the D, same as always, Hughes and Hronik, Cole and Juleson, Zadorov and Myers, and then Thatcher Demko starting in goal. Now, Neil Zaman, he had a really good game. That his first game after signing his two-year contract extension, that game in Seattle where he had, I think, two assists, but he's kind of slowed down a little bit. That line's just been okay. Of course, you're not going to do that much when you're only playing eight, nine, ten minutes a game. Um, Kuzmenko got his goal when he was actually on the power play, not when he was playing with his line mates. But having said that, um, Suter, I think, is a big upgrade over Neil Zaman. For those of you worrying well, about losing Amon to waivers and stuff, the, the interesting thing is the way the Canucks set up their roster is Pia Suter was the 22nd. You, you can have 23 guys. Usually it's 13 or 14 forwards, 7 or 8 defensemen, and 2 goalies. But 21 skaters and 2 goalies is the usual 23-man active roster. The Canucks, the last few games, have only been playing with 21 guys on their roster. So they've had their 12 forwards um, plus, yeah, they've had their 12 forwards. They've had seven healthy D men, so that makes 19, and then the two goalies, so that's only 21. They actually had roster spots for Suter and Susie. So you can bring Suter onto the active roster, technically he wasn't even off of it, and then you don't have to lose Niels Amon. So the Canucks are not over the roster limit. They do not have to try and send Amon down to the minors, and therefore you, they do not have to risk losing him on waivers. So Niels Amon just simply becomes a healthy scratch. Mark Friedman is the healthy scratch, again, likely on, on D. So now you have 12 forwards playing, you have six defensemen playing, and you have one goalie playing, so that's 19. Then you have a healthy forward scratch, a healthy defense scratch, and a, uh, and a backup goalie, so that's 22. So the Canucks still have that one roster spot, and that cut that could be filled by Susie when he gets back from injury next month, unless they do something prior to that and they need that spot. So no worries, we're not losing Niels Amon. And, and then you have him as your extra forward now, and then you have some insurance just in case you want to change up a look or in case in, in a short-term injury does happen. I think Suter ultimately, I think he's got more offensive upside than, than Bluger. So I think just as I think that Kuzmenko eventually is going to replace Lafferty on the top line again, I do think we'll see Suter uh, replace Teddy Bluger on the third line, but not yet. It's his first game back after a month. I'm actually surprised he's playing tonight. Well, not really. I wanted to play Tuesday night, but he wasn't ready. Then the way Tockett was talking, I didn't know if he'd be ready to play tonight. But he is going to play tonight. So look forward to seeing Pius Suter on the ice tonight. But I don't think anyone's going to see Suter as much as we think he's a good part of this team. It is a night dedicated to Roberto Luongo. He's my favorite player of all time. I was able to hang out with Trevor on Locked On Canucks earlier this morning. Make sure you check that out. Um, and speaking of Trevor, so I want to give a shout out to Trevor. Locked On Canucks, Trevor and Kyle doing great work. And I want to also give a shout out to Rev Trev. Uh, Kempner Canucks, who I met, I used, as you guys know, the Lightning game, he just put up a, a vlog this morning about his experience, about the game, about his trip, and he said some nice, uh, really nice words about me and his vlog. So Trev, Rev Trev, right back at you. Thank you for the kind words and keep doing what you're doing. And Trevor Beggs, thanks for having me on Locked on Canucks this morning. Had a lot of fun. Roberto Longo, my stance is this. I would prefer him to have his jersey retired 
as opposed to just being in the ring of honor. You look at their jersey, the, the six players that have their jersey retired in Vancouver, three of them are in the Hall of Fame, the Sedins and Bure. You have three that are not in the Hall of Fame in Smeal, Linden, and Naslin. So it's not like just because you're in the Hall of Fame means, or just because you have your jersey up, or just because you're Hall of Fame means you're, you get your jersey. And vice versa, just because your, um, your jersey goes up, you're in the Hall of Fame. It doesn't work like that. Obviously, different criteria for different, for different honors. But for Roberto Luongo, the best goaltender in Canucks history, the uh, number one in wins, number one in goals, number one in uh, goals against, I should say, in save percentage. Yes, he was uh, a captain. That's not why you make him a captain. Uh, not why you make him uh, retire his jersey, I should say. But I just think uh, he's synonymous with all, with at least uh, some of the greatest moments in Canucks history. And then, uh, yeah, so having said all that, my preference would be for him to be have his jersey retired as opposed to the Ring of Honor. But, and I'm not just saying this because I, I, I'm too chicken for my, to, to face, you know, um, different opinions. I, I'm 100% fine with the honor that they've settled on, and that's the Ring of Honor, because there's some really good players in the Ring of Honor already, and um, I, I think there's this argument out there too that he didn't leave on the best terms, that he... Um, that the contract was tough on the Canucks, even though that wasn't really Luongo's fault. And overall, he didn't really win a lot of individual accolades. In fact, they, it's crazy. I looked, the only, the only major award he won was the Jennings Trophy, best goals against, and he split that with Corey Schneider in the 2011 season. Uh, he was a, a runner-up for the Vesna and the Hart Trophy in 2007. He lost the Hart to Sidney Crosby, lost the Vesna to Martin Brodeur. But yeah, he has never won a major trophy as an individual. So that's one thing you could look at as well. But I don't think I think Long was a piece with it. He had his jersey retired in Florida. He's going up in the Ring of Honor here, and uh, really, there's not much more to say than to celebrate him. Um, I I love the way he played on the ice. I love the way he was off the ice. Ironic that he got more popular as as his tenure here ended, as he became more comfortable with the media. And you guys know the story. After Marie and I did our tribute song to him, "Boys to Men," end of the road, he actually sent us a DM thanking us for that the touch and tribute which has always meant a lot to me got to meet him last year when the canucks honored him and and the sedines for their hockey hall of fame accomplishments so i got to take a picture with him outside the arena and i will, I will cherish that experience um for sure so if you're at the game tonight second intermission i'm going to hobble down to the concourse outside of section 316 would love to say a quick hello to you during the second intermission Otherwise, whether you're at the game or, or watching at home, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you check, in, check it out a few minutes early to, to see the, the, the Ring of Honor ceremony for Bobby Lou. Shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate, Perform and Transform Personal Training Weight Loss. Thank you, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovalander, legendary Andrew Chang, and to Hall of Fame franchise members as well. And thanks to all of you for watching, liking, and subscribing. You can subscribe, you can like, you can leave a donation, you can become a member, you can upgrade your membership, and give me your score prediction too, um, and your first Canucks goal scorer. I'm going 4-2 Vancouver, surprise, surprise, still haven't done it yet. I'm going Brock Besser as my first goal scorer. Leave me your predictions down below, and leave me your thoughts on the legacy of Roberto Luongo. Okay, friends, hope you have a great day. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. God bless, and enjoy the game. Go Canucks, go.